poor Edgar. The prince surely came here after everyone went to sleep and did nothing but stare at the altar, the gardens, the red carpet, trying to recover any of the happy moments before everything fell apart. Knowing the prince, Graham has no doubt Edgar has been blaming himself for letting that cloaked man steal Rosella out of his embrace. How long the prince tormented himself so before finally succumbing to exhaustion, Graham can only guess. Oh, Edgar, are you awake? What? what? Who? Oh, it's you, King Graham. D did you make it back all right? Sun is up already. What time is it? Mid-morning. Well, no wonder. I stayed with Rosella until the storm passed. Then I came here. Wandering in the memories of what could have been is only going to make things worse for you. I can't help it. Besides, it's not going to make it any easier if I'm somewhere else. Rosella is still under that spell, no matter where I am. It's not where you physically are, but where your heart is that matters. You have to believe. I'm trying. Son, I know I already asked you this, but... You didn't get to see the stranger's face? I... I gazed at it. The little I could see under that hood. But my eyes were locked up in his eyes. Red, scary eyes. Just thinking of those eyes sent shivers down my spine. Did he look human? I was about to say that. No, not at all. But then again, I just couldn't tell. It was evil, that's all I know. What do you think of the Green Isles? It's different. Different from any land I've ever seen before. Different from Temir, different from Eldritch, different from Etheria. But I think I love it. You're not alone there. It's just that... what's happened here? Why? Why did this have to happen? Such a beautiful day! Ruined entirely! I've been trying to answer that question myself, but I'm most certain that things always happen for a reason. What the reason is, we have yet to see. I don't see any worthy reasons for this to happen. Sometimes we can't see them. Not right away. There are acting forces greater than us, after all. The fates can be mysterious. Couldn't this just be explained by pure evil? Perhaps. But what seems evil at first often leads to something good, if we are determined enough to change it. It's hard for me to see it that way. But you do have more experiences than I do. I must tell you I had my doubts about you and Rosella. Why? Don't get me wrong, but Rosella is such an adventurous young lady, and you seem more moderate than she. <laughs> We always meet at a middle point. I must say, though, that most of the times I find myself dragged into her crazy ideas. Do you remember the celebrations following the restoration of the Mask of Eternity? Yes, you weren't able to go because... It was you in that disguise, wasn't it? I thought it was a little too crazy at the time. But that's Rosella. She formulated that whole plan of me going to the celebration in disguise so as not to attract attention to us. Or, that's what she said. I just think she did it for the sake of excitement. It's not that I'm blaming her or something. And it seemed to work, too. No one seemed to even glance at me. You don't know what a relief it was not to be gawked at like some expensive painting. Or to be asked questions about when Rosella and I were going to be married. It all seems a little silly to me now, but... Boy... She is so determined. She was always pulling me into these little plots of hers. That sounds like a perilous life you're looking forward to. Well, maybe I'm not looking to stick my head in a thorn bush. But I do want Rosella to be my... Uh, well, my wife. Let me tell you something, my child. Rosella is probably the bravest young woman I have ever seen. And I'm not telling you because she's my daughter. Why, most of the time, I wish she was just a regular girl. Well, that's everything she's not. She has her own way of loving. And if you got her to settle her head down and get married, she must love you incredibly. I think she does. I'm sure she does.
What do the people of your homeland think of your marriage to Rosella? There were a lot of different reactions when my father made the announcement. Some of the fairies laughed, some cheered, some shouted at me. Why would they do that? Well, you have to keep in mind that I'm not human. I'm a fairy that... looks human. Like my Aunt Melicia. And a fairy marrying a human may seem ridiculous to some of the... well, higher citizens of Etheria. It's not how everyone else feels about what you choose, but what your heart tells you, lad. That's all that matters. It took me a while to realize that. But my love for Rosella made me see it that way. My family is possibly closer to humanity than most of the supernatural beings. We think that humans and fairies couldn't survive without each other. That seems like a perfectly good reason to marry Rosella to me. Besides, even before I knew who I really, um, was, I knew that I loved her. That's how I've always felt about my Valenice. <laughs> I loved her the moment I saw her. Keep your hopes up, Edgar. And soon you and Rosella will be together again as it should be. Thank you for saying that, Your Majesty. I can only hope that she will be well again soon. Edgar, you met the same fate as my son. You were taken from your family when you were an infant and raised by someone who wasn't your mother. How did it feel? Uh, why don't you ask your son? It's not that I couldn't tell you, but... Because Alexander, he doesn't talk much about it. I don't know if I should say this, but it's funny that you mentioned that. Why? I don't know. I won't let him know. Well, I guess it wouldn't do any harm. A couple of days ago, it was late at night, and Rosella and Cassima were busy with the wedding dress and all that. So I walked to the beach, and Alexander was there, swimming in the sea. He didn't have his shirt on, and I saw these... Scars on his back. Scars? Heavens. Did he notice you there? <sighs> he did. I didn't know what to say. It was very awkward for both of us. I was about to leave, but he asked me to stay. When I said it was funny you asked me that question, it was because he asked me the same. He then went on to ask me if I had recovered from my own kidnapping. What was your answer? Your Majesty. I didn't suffer as much as your son did. Lalote did love me, in her own twisted way. She did protect me. I wasn't treated as a slave, but as her son. Didn't you ever feel she wasn't your true mother? It was hard to tell. I guess sometimes I did, but I got used to it. That was something Alexander told me he never did. He somehow knew he had a family out there. He could never bear the thought of never seeing them. You. Maybe that's why he escaped while you stayed. In my case, it was Rosella who made me see. Who gave me the strength to do something about it. But for Alex, it was another story. Has Alexander talked to you more about it since that night? No. I never expected him to say anything the first time either. Did you mention any of this to Rosella? No. I didn't want to weigh Rosella down with these stories. I don't think she's aware of this. She's very proud of him. She says she always knew he was alive, and she'd dream about meeting him. And over the years, she created this image of him in her mind. I'm happy to know that they get along so well. Rosella insists that he should talk more, and sometimes she wishes he would tell her more about his past. But her love for him is pure. She even told me once that one of the reasons she rejected me the first time we met in Tamir was because she couldn't bear the feeling that she was going to be separated so soon from her brother after having just met him. I know how true that is. After she came back from Tamir, they would spend all their time together, day and night. Rosella was eager to show Alexander every hidden corner of Daventry, even when Alexander would sometimes prefer to stay alone reading, or be in the company of his mother. Rosella says he's very close to the Queen. Yes. While Rosella and I are much alike, Alexander really enjoys the company of his mother, and to Valenice this is a treasure, especially after believing him dead for so many years. Do you think this family... And excuse me for being so bold of calling you my family. You are one of us, my child. Do you think we'll ever find happiness? There's a paradox to that. You couldn't know what happiness is if you don't live through the tougher times like this. They make you stronger, and they make you value those moments of happiness with all your heart. That is one thing I've learned already. But sometimes it seems as though there are more tough times than good. And we've all had enough of those. I'd better be off now. Farewell, Your Highness. Tell me if there is anything at all I can do to help Rosella. I will.
someone must have forgotten this water bottle here. What's this? It looks like Cosima's necklace. She must have had it with her last night and dropped it here. Thank <laughs> you. 